Okay, guys. Uh, good morning and good evening, guys. Uh, this is Kumar here. I uh, will be the instructor uh, uh, for today's session. Okay, so Liju is saying I'm new to this. Uh, okay, that's good to know. That's fine. No problem. Uh, so, guys, uh, can you all confirm if you can see my screen? Uh, my uh, uh, the one with the elephant logo and an instructor. Okay, perfect. All right. So, uh, at the end of this uh, module, the primary objectives would be uh, uh, what we would try to explain to you is uh, as a quick uh, cluster introduction. Then we see uh, what is the recommended configuration for a cluster. Then we'll see what are the different modes of uh, cluster running, right? Your Hadoop uh, cluster modes. Then we'll uh, introduce you to the concepts of Kerberos, security and Kerberos. And also primarily talk about uh, how do administrator roles and responsibilities currently in the market. And finally, I'll do a small, a slight, a small demo. So uh, this demo is basically, uh, I mean, there are multiple steps involved, but I think uh, these steps are all not something which we cannot squeeze in a, a well, maybe in one hour. So, so some of the steps which we already configured, and some of the basic steps where we, I will show you both an automated way, and also, a, I mean, uh, the steps will be uh, multiple ways, and it requires both an both manual installation as well as an automated installation. So, primarily, the automated uh, steps is what I would be showing you right now, and we would be uh, leveraging the. Uh, the leading vendors uh, uh, product uh, Hortonworks uh, HTP. Okay, so they have an Ambari tool, and using that Ambari tool is what we will be setting up the uh, rest of the demo. Now, uh, uh, any questions you have, uh, uh, guys, uh, please, uh, I mean, you can, you can type into the chat window or raise a hand, okay, anytime you have a questions. Uh, since some of the, since I think some of the people are new to this, uh, uh, I mean, some of the people are new, uh, let's uh, quickly uh, go to, I mean, slight uh, quick. Uh, how do components uh, so for the guys with experience I would say this is a quick recap of what you guys are I mean what you guys have been learning till now or what you guys have been doing but for the guys with uh, uh, no experience no experience or no exposure uh, maybe uh, maybe this will give you a quick uh, uh, overview or keep quick uh, quick uh, inside view of how Edureka how Edureka does the uh, does the sessions and does the online sessions and how Edureka's uh, training delivery mode will be okay so this is a good opportunity to learn. All right, uh, Rohit is asking, can we get the PPTs? Uh, uh, you need to reach out to the support. Uh, the support should be able to provide you the PPTs. Okay, so these PPTs are, uh, I think, uh, should be available uh, uh, in only a, a limited set of uh, uh, limited set of uh, slides will be available. I think once we enroll for the course, is what uh, uh, you can get a full fledged uh, content. <clears throat> now, now uh, coming to uh, quickly coming to Hadoop Core Components. Uh, the reason we are seeing here is Hadoop 2.x is. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean there are multiple versions of Hadoop. So Hadoop 1 and Hadoop 2. The current version is uh, Hadoop 2, which has got far more advanced features than uh, your Hadoop 1. Now Hadoop 1 is uh, historical now. I think uh, maybe I would say people are moving away from Hadoop 1 to Hadoop 2. And uh, and Hadoop 1 has uh, some of the limitations with Hadoop 1, like your name node, uh, like a single name node where there is no HA. And uh, and I mean, there has a lot, lot, I mean, a name node has limitations on Hadoop, Hadoop 1, where, whereas with Hadoop 2, you don't have any such limitations. So you can have multiple name nodes uh, available in your cluster. Now that's one thing that's called federation. The second one is a higher high availability, where with Hadoop 1, you talk something called a secondary name node, while with Hadoop 2, you talk about something called as a, a, a standby name node. So this is a little bit advanced what I'm talking right now. So now if I step back a little bit, <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. So if I step back a little bit and talk about uh, what are the core components of Hadoop, your Hadoop is made up of two components. One is your storage layer, and the second one is your processing part, right? So anytime you talk about Hadoop, uh, what it is, Hadoop is your storage, your HDFS, which we called as a Hadoop distributed file system, and the processing part. The processing part is nothing but your MapReduce, which is version one. Okay, MapReduce is version one. We call uh, MapReduce is version one, and the higher version of MapReduce with uh, version two is something called YAN. Okay, now what is YARN? YARN is a processing frame, 
framework introduced with Hadoop 2 and this is your uh, uh, this is nothing but uh, yet another resource negotiator. So Anand has a question coming in, does Kerberos goes with Windows or Unix? Uh, so yeah, so Kerberos is a concept which is nothing uh, which is nothing to do with Hadoop guys. Okay, it has it is not a packaged or it is not something which comes with Hadoop. Kerberos is a is a completely a uh, separate concept which can be installed, okay, which is used to secure your system, secure, I mean, lock down your uh, operating system or your file system so that there is no misuse of any of your, uh, I mean, any of your uh, of oh, files or directories. Now, now this is this is nothing to do with Hadoop. When I say nothing to do with the Hadoop, it is not something which has uh, inbuilt into Hadoop. It is a separate concept, and it is primarily an operating system concept. Okay. When I say an OS concept, it is it can be installed on a Windows, it can be installed on a Linux machine, on any flavor. Okay. So this is completely separate. So it is actually an operating system concept. It is not a Hadoop concept. So, so there are some advantages which I'll show you uh, during this session or in the next uh, next uh, 30 to 40 minutes when we talk about there are some primary advantages why why uh, why people have started uh, uh, including Kerberos with your Hadoop. Okay. Hope that answers your question. Uh, now. <clears throat> Now coming back to the Hadoop core components, uh, uh, primarily there are two components: your HDFS part and there is a processing part. Now HDFS, there is no from there is no major change, okay, in, in your storage or HDFS. Uh, okay, let's step back a little bit further more and say your two components: the storage components and the processing components. Processing is nothing but your MapReduce part, right? So you might be hearing about MapReduce. So what is MapReduce? That is a processing. That is the processing framework. Now, now on the storage you have HDFS. HDFS is nothing but your Hadoop distributed file system. And on your processing side, you see here YARN. YARN is can be considered as a next version of MapReduce, which is we typically call it as a version two of MapReduce, right? Now with YARN, uh, I mean there are a lot of uh, advantages also here. I mean, which is what you you learn in depth when you. I mean, that is completely out of the scope, but just trying to give you a, a quick uh, heads up or heads on on that. So, YARN, YARN, what YARN does is it it completely segregates your cluster resource management, right? Your resource management, where with Hadoop one you talk about job tracker, which is a um, now, which is overburden. Now you, you see with, with Yarn, your job there is no job tracker. There is, I mean, this concept is replaced with something called resource manager, and uh, and and the job of a job tracker has been delegated to multiple uh, uh, nodes here. Okay, that is something which uh, you know, guys would. I mean, that is primarily towards your Hadoop admin uh, uh, Hadoop admin topics is what uh, you can talk about or you can discuss more in there. Now, primarily importantly, we've seen uh, uh, the core components, your storage part, which is your HDFS, and your processing part, which is your YARN. And, <coughs> and within this, you see something here, the master and the slave. So what is a master? So every every process or every each component will have a master process and a slave process, okay? Now, now slave process and a master process typically is what we call it as a daemon. What is a daemon? Uh, guys, you should be knowing that daemon. Daemon is uh, any process which is uh, running is called a daemon, right? Any background process or any process which is up and running. So anytime on a cluster, on your Hadoop cluster, you would see all these nodes or all these processes up and running. Okay, so moving on. Uh, moving on, a typical uh, Hadoop cluster, uh, this is how your Hadoop cluster would look like. Uh, typically, uh, uh, your name node, right? Look at this name node. Your name node and your standby node should be of identical configuration. So what we are seeing right now is your uh, hardware and software configuration. Primarily, this is targeted towards uh, what hardware you need to choose and uh, what OS you can choose. Okay, now, now if you look at here, uh, if you look at here, the the memory is very very important on the name node. Okay, so you you might be seeing the name node and the standby node are of equal configuration, right? So you have a hard disk is of not importance here, but the memory is very very important. And uh, an operating system is any 64-bit version can be supported. 
Uh, hi, Ankush. Uh, we just got started a couple of maybe ten, five, five minutes back. So uh, welcome to this. Uh, please uh, continue uh, proceeding to listening. So this is being recorded, guys. I think uh, the recording will be shared with your people. Uh, uh, and any questions you have, you can always uh, uh, put, in, put, it, put in there. All right. Oops. Uh, now, now you also have a secondary name node. Now, I mean, uh, secondary name node is not required when you have a standby node. You will not be requiring a secondary name node. All right. So this is something which uh, your typical Hadoop cluster would look like. So people who have already got experience, they should be more familiar with this. Uh, this is actually a Hadoop two uh, uh, two uh, two architect Hadoop two architecture representation. Now. Now, now if you look at that, uh, if you look at the slave parts, right? The slave parts are what? The slave parts are your uh, data nodes, right? The data nodes will. Uh, what is important at the data nodes is uh, uh, is a disk. Is a hard disk is what is important. RAM is of not that importance here because uh, we are talking about uh, distributed systems here. So, so on your on your name node, your RAM is important. On the data nodes, RAM is of not that importance. Okay, hard disk is of importance. Then you have uh, you have uh, Ethernet interfaces. You need to have multiple interfaces, and then uh, you take uh, CentOS. Any 64-bit operating system, right? CentOS is just an example we are giving here. But typically, you can also have uh, uh, you can also go with uh, Oh, with Linux, uh, with Red Hat Linux, or with uh, RHEL or SUSE or uh, OEL or any of the flavors available. Okay, so so these are all open source available, and you, you only need to uh, you don't need to purchase a license for it. Only for the support is what you will be requiring. Uh, 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 requiring to pay pay for the uh, I mean pay for the support requirements. Uh, Kunal is asking, what's the essence of three hard disks for data nodes? Uh, to, 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 to. Uh, three hard disks for the data nodes. Uh, uh, I think on the data nodes, I think we are talking about six into two terabytes, right? So that is again a different concept, guys. Uh, why we go with the uh, hard disk of multiple disks, right? See, uh, see what we talked about is uh, something called the commodity hardware, right? So these are your commodity hardware, uh, where uh, where uh, uh, which are cheaper hardware, but not cheap. Okay, these are I mean, data nodes are cheaper hardware, but not cheap. But your your name node should be your high-end class and high-class servers. Okay, so <clears throat> so what is the essence of three hard disks for data nodes, and why multiple NIC cards in data nodes and not name nodes? Right. So if multiple NIC cards are here, right? So you have three NIC cards here. Here also three NIC cards. So name nodes we need to have three NIC cards. Uh, disk is of not. Uh, I mean, I mean. See, primarily, entirely, everything is being written onto your hard disk, right? Your hard disk on the data nodes, where your data is being resided, right? Your data is residing in this location, but here on the name node, your metadata, right? Whatever metadata you see, the metadata is being written into RAM, right? It is, yeah, obviously, it will be written into the disk as well as the RAM, but so the RAM is very important. So that the name, when the data nodes want to write a file or read a file from the cluster, they will typically contact the name node, and the name node will in turn query the metadata from within the RAM and pull it as soon as possible. Okay, so the essence here is to uh, to uh, to get the to get the metadata as soon as possible, and that's why everything will be loaded in the, into the RAM. Now on the on the data nodes, uh, you have 16 GB RAM because so though, though the processing is happening here, the MapRed processing is happening here. This is distributed. This is parallel processing. Okay, multiple data nodes participate in doing your MapRed use process. So I mean, so so you can go with a lesser uh, lesser configuration on your RAM. Okay, so that is again a deeper concept, guys. So if you go deeper into Hadoop administration, that is something which uh, I mean you need to go deeper in there. So uh, which is not uh, which is not what we are not touching right now. <clears throat> uh, and the question that's coming in is, uh, are name nodes in separate cluster? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, when you uh, see, uh, when I say, uh, I think, uh, see, when I talk about, see, these are all. This is entirely is one cluster. Okay. So in this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So this is my nine node cluster. Okay. This is a nine node cluster right now, and this is secondary node. Name node is optional. Optional in the sense, if you don't have a standby name node, you will definitely need a secondary name node. Now, if you have a standby name node, you will you will be eliminating your secondary name node. You don't need a secondary name node. 
right? So, so this is this is something what uh, uh, what I mean. Secondary name node does a lot of things. Like uh, people call it as a checkpointing node also. Okay, so you can do a Google search of what checkpoint node is. So this functionality is replaced by the standby node. So that's why it's mentioned as optional here. But in fact, if you have a uh, if you have a standby node, uh, there is no requirement for a secondary name node. So this is your entire cluster. Okay, this is an entire cluster is what we are talking about right now. So the name nodes will be internal to the cluster. The name nodes cannot be external to the cluster. Uh, what is uh, uh, what is redundant power supply? Uh, redundant power supply is uh, if you have ever done a data center walkthrough. I know some of you are from uh, fresh out of club college, but uh, uh, people who have done it. I mean, when you see a data center, right? If you see, if you, I mean, if you, you can go, you can uh, do a Google search on the, on. I mean, you can search for a data center, and you'll see, you'll see multiple servers stacked into racks. Okay, servers are stacked into racks, and each server will have two or three power lines. Okay, power lines in the sense of power supplies. So dual power supply is what dual power supply is. If one power supply goes down, the second power supply can pick it up. I mean, in the sense, your your machine is still up because you have a two power supplies. So one can be on a UPS, the first one can be on something else, right? I mean, the first one can be on your DC, then the second one can be on your uh, UPS. So if if the if the first one goes down, you you still have your uh, server up and running because of dual power supplies. Okay, uh, I see some raised hands coming in. Uh, Shubham, uh, please go ahead. Any question from you? Uh, I see a raised hand. Uh, so guys, uh, so Jayvish, I think I answered your question. Uh, hopefully. Now I have another question coming in. Uh, is there is there new addition of standby name node in Hadoop to Sandeep? Uh, uh, see Sandeep, uh, see uh, standby name node is yes that is with Hadoop two right. So see it's a it's a standby name node is a is part of a concept called HA. Okay, so Hadoop uh, HDFS HA primarily HDFS HA HDFS HA is what is not available with uh, uh, with your Hadoop one. HDFS HA is what is available with your Hadoop two. Okay, so that is so. So for HA to work, you are not requiring a secondary name node. You'd be needing something called a standby node. So that is what it is referring here. So standby name node, yes, it has been introduced with Hadoop two. That's right. <coughs> now, now uh, moving on. Now uh, something. Uh, I mean, something interesting that you typically would be seeing is. Uh, uh, I mean a quick uh, a quick representation indicating how you can uh, you can you can you can approximately figure out how much data is coming in, right? So so if you see here, the cluster growth on storage capacity is often a good method to use, right? When you say uh, if you have a data, if you have a cluster of say uh, now say you have a cluster of five terabytes, right? So how much uh, how much I mean no, not five terabytes you say. Uh, your data going into the cluster is one terabyte. So, how much space is required, guys? How much space is required on my cluster to store one terabyte data? Can you just quickly answer this? People who have experienced or people who have already worked on this. That's right. Yeah. So, you, you typically would be requiring three ter terabytes, right? Uh, Kunal, no, not 30 percent, but yeah. So, so typically, see, there is a, something called a default replication. The, re, the replication factor is something which. Oh, sorry, guys, this keeps going out. Uh, sorry about that. See, the, oops. See, uh, whatever data you upload into the cluster should be replicated three times, right? So, will be by default replicated three times. So, that is one of the important features of your uh, Hadoop cluster. Right. So any data you upload to the cluster is replicated twice. So you have three times of the same data replicated. Now, <clears throat> now, now there is also something called a block size, right? So block size is something which you can learn later. But uh, three terabytes is if I'm if I'm uploading one terabyte into my cluster, then obviously I would require three terabytes of the cluster space. Now, as an approximation, if we have five terabyte for per week. Okay, HDF is said to replicate each block three times. Now, now we are requiring 15 terabytes of disk space per week. Okay, and assume 30 percent overhead, and in total, I would require, I would require 5 to 3 terabyte hard drives. Okay, so that means 
that means this is coming back to a new server every week right a new server every week is what I would be building in so that is something which as a Hadoop administrator you typically be uh, needing to understand uh, at some point of time or you need to you need to keep forecasting okay so if you are primarily targeting towards Hadoop administration as a Hadoop administrator you need to continuously see what is the cluster capacity what is the usage and how much data is coming into my cluster on a week on week basis or on a day on day to day basis so the whole thing is you don't want to end up in a situation where where your cluster capacity is full okay your cluster capacity has reached 98% and you don't have a way to expand it so so you need to forecast it and make sure you you keep on increasing the cluster as per the requirements now uh, that's about uh, i think uh, we talked about slave nodes uh, 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 okay, so here is what we're talking about the recommendations on what is what you require for your slave nodes. Okay, the recommended configuration. Uh, Kunal's question: uh, uh, Why not use RAID? Uh, it's mentioned in the uh, right. So I'll, I'll answer the, I'll answer that question. What is the max replication factor we can give? The max replication factor we can give is 512. So 512 replications is what you can keep. Okay, so. <clears throat> Now high performance versus low performance components. So uh, the recommended configuration for slave nodes, uh, uh, general configuration, and if you look at a special configuration, right? So general dependent on depends on requirement based configuration for a slave node. Okay. So four into one terabyte or two terabytes in a JBoard configuration. Now what is JBoard? JBoard JBoard is a just a bunch of disks. Okay. Just a bunch of disks. Do not use RAID. Okay. Two quad core CPUs and uh, RAM is worth uh, maybe 24 and gigabit Ethernet. Now, the guys with experience, can you say why it's not no RAID is required? Can you just type in the chat window why why it's saying not RAID for slave nodes? Exactly. So so see what will happening is see on the data node. Okay, now what is RAID? RAID is a redundant array of independent disk, right? If you look at RAID architecture, how will it happen? Is RAID uh, yes, Rohit, uh, 512 is again the block size, okay, 128 is, uh, 64 MB is default and 128 and 512 is the block size. Uh, the question was, what is the maximum replications you can set, okay? That is something which, I mean, obviously you will not be going that forward, but uh, but 512 is something which you can set, but by default, 3X is a default replication and people won't to move ab I mean, above the 3X replication, okay? So it's of no use if you go uh, beyond that because uh, you are unnecessarily wasting space on the disk. Now, coming back to the question on the JBoard, so JBoard is nothing but a just a bunch of disks, okay? That is that is com that is completely against your RAID, okay? RAID is what? RAID is a is a, a set of disks, okay? So if you if you want to visualize how a RAID looks, if you look at a, a CD track, right? CD track tray, where uh, uh, maybe you can say CD tray, right? In a CD tray, you you stack multiple, let's like, say, 50 CDs on top of one another, or say 10 CDs. Now what will happen is when the write is happening onto the disk, right, in the spindle, right, when the spindle, uh, I mean when you want to write something onto the disk, uh, in a RAID architecture, a mirror image will be copied, okay. So a mirror image will be copied, so whatever you write onto the disk, there will be a mirror copy available. So in case one of the disk fails, you will can always recover the data from the mirror copy, okay. Now you should be getting why we don't need a RAID. And there is a by default on a cluster we have 3x replication. Now we have 3x replication, one terabyte of data you're occupying three times. If you have RAID also, what will happen? Three more times, right? So whatever data you're writing, it will be multiplied. So so because re replication is already there, you you should be avoid using the uh, uh, using a RAID here. And that's why you say JBoard. JBoards are nothing but your uh, uh, just a bunch of this. So this is one of the interview questions, guys. Okay, so typically people will ask about this, and also certification questions might come up. Okay, so JBoards and RAID, and this is very very important. Okay, now, uh, so this is where you're saying do not use RAID, and if you look at a special configuration, multiples of uh, hard drives, right? So you always go for a multiple hard disk rather than a single hard disk. Okay, the reason being. Uh, 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 
the reason being, uh, the reason being, uh, sorry, sorry guys, the reason being, uh, see, uh, if you have this, everything being written into a single hard disk, uh, into a single hard disk, what will happen is, uh, if that disk crashes, okay, that disk crashes, everything is gone, right? If you have multiple disks, you can keep on recovering, I mean, one disk, you can, if you, if you can safely have one or two disks uh, going down. Uh, another question that we're talking getting is uh, is Jboard a new name? Uh, no, 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 Vicky. Jboard is completely different, not a new name. Okay. Uh, may, maybe because redundancy is already taken care. That's right, Kunal. No uh, for expensive storage. So Jboard is completely opposite to a RAID. Okay. RAID is expensive. Jboards are cheaper. RAID, uh, uh, RAID is you will have multiple copies of okay, the same data. The RAID version that we are talking can be anything, RAID 1 to 10, okay? So the RAID 0 to 9, I think, right? So any of those. Right, so yeah, Rohit, we use RAID for only name node, not for uh, uh, not for data nodes, okay? So the, the one which we are talking about here is uh, slave nodes, right? So only for the slave nodes we use RAID and not for the, uh, uh, um, not for the data nodes, okay? Uh, Uh, that's right, uh, Amit. Uh, Amit is saying you can do better read-write with multiple disks. Uh, again, one more thing is uh, multiple disks is not for redundancy but for performance. Uh, uh, multiple disks, see, multiple disks is not for redundancy but for performance. Okay, so Amit, Amit is saying you can do better read-write with multiple disks on the data nodes. Yeah, that's right. So we see multiple disks happens. Okay, see, the reason we are having multiple disks is Okay, if you have a single disk, okay, if you have a single disk, I mean, if the if the data node, sorry guys, so if you have a single disk and if that disk is crashed, your entire data on that disk on that server is lost. If you have multiple disks, the data is split across multiple disks. Even if one disk is down, okay, one disk is crashed, you can simply you can safely take out the disk and uh, replace it, right, and then get the uh, I mean. I mean, format the disk, put it back, and then uh, load the data. But again, there is also the concept of 3x replication, right? I think one of the questions that came is why only 3x? So that is again one more uh, uh, important thing, why only 3x? Uh, because uh, 3x replication is, uh, uh, there's a reason why we have 3x replication. The first being, uh, the first replication will go into as uh, the, I mean, the, to the, to the data node which is closest to the client okay the first replication the first blocks objective is to make sure the data hits the cluster the the moment as soon as possible okay so there is no data loss the second one is for redundancy so that it copies into a second rack okay on a on a node on a different node in a second rack and the third one it will be on the same rack okay in case of a rack failure okay in case of a data multiple data nodes failure Okay, so first one is on closest to the client. The second one is to make sure there is redundancy. If one rack goes down, uh, the block is copied onto a different node on a different rack. And the third block is copied onto a third node on the same rack, on the second, where the second block is available. Okay, so the fourth, I mean, you can also have a four replication, four X. So if you have more than three X replication, the fourth and the succeeding, uh, uh, the subsequent blocks can be written by default. Okay, they can go into any default locations, which the name node will arbitrarily decide. Uh, okay, so a couple of more questions coming in. Uh, how read write happens in jboard see jboard it's nothing but a disk okay multiple disks so uh, read write is something which is a uh, i mean it, it writes only one time onto the jboard disk okay uh, parallel processing is enabled uh, thanks samir i think samir and wiki saying that uh, raid is used for name nodes uh, yes wiki raid is used for name node that's right data is never replicated between disk in the same node Yes, obviously, data will never be, rep uh, see the block, okay, block is what we are talking about, block will never be replicated on the same node, block will be replicated, what, see the third replication, what I said, will be on a different data node on a separate rack, sorry, okay, so, so one block will be on one data node on a one rack, and two subsequent blocks, okay, if I have a 3x replication, the two subsequent blocks will go into a second rack, okay, or or okay, or, or a third rack, but both the blocks will be on the same rack. So at any point of time, your three blocks will be on two racks. Okay, two racks on different on three different nodes. 
Uh, okay, data is never replicated between disks in the same node. That's right. Yes, Samit, that's right. Uh, how it finds out the distance closer for? Uh, see the uh, the distance between. See if you have uh, see if you have a if you have a client machine on the same rack, right? See the communication the communication between the nodes within the rack is it is very faster. Okay, because it doesn't require to come out of the rack. So, so on the top of the rack there is something called a top of the rack switch, right? Through the switch is what they communicate, and and that goes on the between the switches. That is intercommunication. But intra in bit within inside the switch. Okay, within inside the, if the client is inside the switch, the communication will be faster. Uh, okay, so Amit is asking. So failure of a disk, even if we have uh, uh, failure of a disk, even if we have three disks, will mark the data node dead. Failure of a disk, even if you have three disks. Uh, see if the if the entire if the entire all the disks are down on a on a node. Yes, that is gone. Uh, Rohit is asking how it finds the distance. Which one is closer? The same rack. Why should we have the client? See, it doesn't require to be on the same machine. Okay, so you may have it or you you don't have it. Okay, so so the client can be on the same rack or it can be on a different rack but the objective is when the client says i want to upload a file okay when the client says i want to upload a file the name node what the name node does is the name node's objective here is to make sure give the closest data node or the data node which is closest to the client location okay it looks into the vlan okay look at the vlan and see which is in the same vlan if it's in the same vlan then ask it to write in the same on the, on the node which is closest to it Okay, based on its IP or VLAN configuration is what it will uh, uh, look and uh, provide the details to the data node. Sorry, to the client of the data node details. Uh, other things or so distance metrics array is used to find the distance uh, one, two, four, eight. Uh, okay, so Amit is saying uh, <clears throat> distance metrics array is used to find the distance one, two, four, eight. Yeah, thanks Amit. Yep. Yeah, okay. So this is about uh, uh, slave node configuration. Uh, moving on, uh, slave nodes. On the more details, we see uh, slave nodes. Uh, RAM. RAM is the uh, uh, see RAM is see RAM is required on the on the slave node because the processing is happening on the slave node, right? The slave node is what the processing part that we talk about is the task tracker. The task tracker is what runs on the slave node, right? So so. So what does what is the processing part? The processing components are your map and reduce components. Okay, so it will take about one GB or two GB of RAM, and slave should not be using virtual memory, right? So enough ensure enough RAM is present to run the task plus the data node task tracker daemons plus the OS. Okay, so so on your on your machine on your data node what what are the daemons running? You see, you'll have an operating system machine. You'll have an operating OS running that would require some RAM. Then you'll have a data node daemon running that would require RAM. Then you have a task tracker daemon that would require RAM. Okay, and make sure make sure the thumb rule is the total number of tasks, either a map task or reduced task, is 1.5 into number of processor cores. Okay. So if it's a dual core, so how many you'll have? If it's a dual core processor, how many tasks you'll get? Uh, that's right, uh, guys. Uh, I'll, uh, yeah, we'll just. I mean, we almost uh, done 30 minutes, so yeah. So we'll uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll definitely go into the today's topic. So uh, before I go there, uh, just want to bring up some. I mean, uh, just want to talk about uh, name node and all the. I mean, all the recommended configurations, right? So uh, I think we are almost. Uh, 30 minutes into the session, so let's actually uh, jump into our actual core core thing, uh, Kerberos part. Uh, some of the important things, uh, uh, some of the important things uh, you need to know is uh, the cluster multiple modes of cluster installations, right? So one of them is standalone mode, the next one is a pseudo mode, the third one is a fully distributed mode. So you guys will already, or you might already be familiar with all these modes. To, so, I mean, standalone is something which uh, uh, is a, it doesn't have a HDFS, right? It doesn't have a distributed file system. And pseudo mode is where you have all the daemons up and running on a single machine, right? So the, what are what are the daemons now? Now my de or, our daemons are name node, data node, then your job tracker and the task tracker. All the daemons will be running on a single machine. And a fully distributed mode is where uh, today we'll see that where we have all the daemons running on multiple machines. So typical in a typical uh, production cluster, what you'd have is uh, 
uh, in a, I mean, in a typical production cluster, what you would have is uh, uh, what you would have is your name, your master daemons, your name node, and your job tracker will be running on one machine, or uh, and your slave components, right? Your data node and task tracker, or data, or your uh, uh, data node and node manager would be running on different machines. So, so that's where the slave components, uh, slave is something which we call as a, a commodity hardware, and the commodity hardware so will have, uh, so they are the cheaper hardware than the expensive, uh, uh, expensive servers. And but important thing is only for the only for the data nodes and only for the slave nodes is what we would use. We will be using the. Uh, 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 community hardware, but primarily for your uh, uh, for your name node, you need you still need to go for an expensive uh, high-end server. <clears throat> Uh, quickly, some of the configuration files. Uh, uh, some of the configuration files: your environmental files, your core site, your HTFS, YAN site, MapRed, slaves. So these are the these are the config files which are familiar. I mean, which are primarily important with your uh, uh, primarily important with uh, uh, Hadoop 2. Okay, Hadoop version 2. So with Hadoop 1, you will not have some of these files. Uh, you will have something here called the master file will be available. Right. So uh, this is how. Uh, so configuration files would look look like. <clears throat> All right, now do, 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 do. now let's look at the security concepts, right? So uh, this is what we are talking about today. Uh, now why why we are talking about security and uh, uh, why uh, we need to look at uh, a solution or a, at a, at an at an alternate mechanism or how do you secure your cluster? Right. So typically, when people say secure a cluster, uh, the first thing uh, that will be done is implemented is your uh, uh, Kerberos. Okay. Now, Kerberos is something which uh, uh, Kerberos is something which is not which does not come with the Hadoop. Okay. It is completely separate component of Hadoop, and uh, it is actually an OS concept. Okay, so it's an OS concept which uh, which typically anyone can enable it so that uh, they can secure their operating systems. Okay, either Linux or Windows, anywhere or whichever it is. Now, the reason why Kerberos has been chosen, uh, the reason why Kerberos has been chosen is because of the uh, because of the uh, uh, because of of the size of the cluster okay so how do we are talking about thousands hundreds and thousands of nodes of the cluster so 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 typically uh, the, the current security systems or the current security packages or software will not be able to scale up to the level where your Hadoop scales, right? So that's why they have chosen Kerberos. And Kerberos is nothing but an open source. Uh, it's a it's an open uh, it's an open source available, fully available uh, from uh, MIT. Okay. So the MIT Institute guys uh, came up with this Kerberos concept, and they came up with this uh, uh, enabling uh, security on the OS layer. Now, what does it do? It does service level authorization and web proxy capabilities in YARN. Okay, and this is what we're talking about. Most security tools fail to scale and perform with big data environments, right? Now, why the security risks? What? Why we're talking about? Sec I mean, what security risks we're talking about? Insufficient authentication. Okay, do not authenticate user services. Now, the client says, "I want to run a MapReduce program to the resource manager." The resource manager blindly goes and uh, goes ahead and runs the runs the program. So it could be. A, I mean, it 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 it. it I mean, the resource manager will ask. Uh, I mean, in fact, your, your uh, applications manager and uh, your scheduler will not even look what who is coming in. It simply goes ahead and runs the program on the node managers, right? So it doesn't matter what who is asking and who is coming in. So no privacy and no integrity, insecure network transport, and no message level security, right? So arbitrary code execution. So there will not be any uh, user verification for MapReduce code, and malicious users can submit a simple job, right? So if I mean if somebody who wants to who wants to play around and see what is available on a different user's directory, he can simply log in and still run this MapReduce program. Now, now we have Kerberos to the rescue uh, network authentication protocol and developed at MIT uh, available as open source. That's something we've already talked about. Uh, so what it is doing is the interaction between the host and the client should be encrypted, okay? And it should be easy for users to use. 
and protect against uh, intercepted credentials right so with Kerberos or typically when you say uh, when you send your user ID and password right so what it is saying is nobody should be intercepting this uh, I mean, nobody should be on the network hacking onto the network and trying to read your username and the password so with Kerberos you're not sending your password you'll be sending a token okay you'll be sending an encrypted token which is what will be decrypted at the other end and uh, and yeah, this is what he's talking about. So it is based on a secret key distribution model. Okay, keys are the basis of authentication in Kerberos, and typically a, a short sequence of bytes. Okay, used to both encrypt and decrypt. Now, when you look at encryption, okay, plain text plus encryption text. Okay, you have a cipher, and you when you want to decrypt this, you have a cipher text plus decryption key, which is nothing but your plain text. Right. So here you are encrypting it and sending a cipher text on the network rather than sending a password. Okay. In the same way at the decryption when you are decrypting it, you take your cipher text and you have a decryption, uh, uh, you have a decryption key and you get the plain, I mean the plain text output. Now two important things. So the three important things you need to look at here is uh, uh, and how does how is it how Kerberos has been integrated with your Hadoop. Right, so there is a user authentication, user and group access control list at cluster level. Okay, uh, and then uh, tokens. So delegation, right? Token is delegation is what delegation is between the the client machine and your uh, and your uh, KDC. So if you look at this part here, something like uh, I mean, you in your uh, in your I mean, when you configure Kerberos, you will something you have something called a KDC. Okay, that is your key distribution center. Now within the KDC, you will have two components. One is an authentication server, and the second one is a ticket granting server. Now, now when the when the client says he wants to authenticate, okay, before that, if you step back a little bit, or if you see here, three important things that you need to learn here is uh, one is a principle, the next one is a uh, authentication, and the final one is a authorization. Right? What is the principle? The principle can be a client or a user, okay, a user or any service. Now that's a that's a principle. Well, authentication is uh, authentication com it comes into picture when say when you're authenticating when you say you're authenticating it is indicating you are who you are right you're typing in a password and saying yes uh, I'm the person I am representing and it is with my password I'm identifying myself now the final thing the authorization authorization is what authorization is indicating what all services or what all uh, components you have access Okay, where all you can navigate through, what all files you can open, what all folders you can open. So three important things, principal uh, authentication and authorization. Okay, now here the tokens is what is used. Okay, instead of uh, sending in the passwords, uh, tokens is what primarily used. So delegation between the client machine. Okay, the job is what then between your uh, uh, between your uh, job tracker and your date and your task trackers, right? And uh, I mean the job token, the block tokens will be your between your name node and the data nodes. Now, when your client wants to say he wants to authenticate, uh, he will typically uh, send in a message to uh, authentication server, okay? And then uh, he would get a he would get a token back. Uh, using the token, he would be contacting or starting the session. So within the token, what will happen in the token? You will have a timestamp or you will have uh, you will have the authorized details and also the timestamp validity for how long you can execute those commands. So what are the applications? We talked about authentication, authorization, uh, confidentiality, and within networks and small sets of networks. Okay, so quickly go inside the demo part. Uh, the demos uh, for today, uh, I would be using, uh, <coughs> hope you guys are seeing my screen. Uh, it's paused, okay. So primarily, this is a. Uh, I mean, the demo I be, I'm doing is on a on a VM box uh, which has uh, which already has my. I mean, which already has some Hadoop installed on it. And uh, I mean, I have a, I have a Ambari installed. Okay, so Ambari is nothing but is uh, this is from Hortonworks uh, Hortonworks framework. And uh, this is a. Uh, so I mean, in the competitors, right? So you have a CDH, you have Cloudera Manager, then you have Ambari. Where uh, I mean, with Ambari, you you, you deploy uh, HTTP, your Hortonworks uh, data platform. Right. So typically, uh, I mean, a lot of steps. Pre, I mean, there are a lot of prerequisite steps, or there are a lot of steps that has to be done. Okay. Now, when you want to authenticate, or when you want to enable, uh, uh, enable uh, security, you simply you know, the simplest step that you can do is go inside admin and say go inside security. 
okay and from here you click on uh, right now it says Kerberos security is disabled right so you simply say enable security here and this will give you a list of steps okay a list of steps what you need to perform as an administrator before you can start enabling Kerberos right so so install and configure and start your KDC right your Kerberos KDC and install and configure the Kerberos client on every host in the cluster right so this is what the first two steps we need to do now the first two steps that I'm doing right now are Oh, one second guys let me show this also right uh, the first uh, the first two steps okay let me share my complete share screen completely uh, that's better I think right coming back here it says install and configure and start your Kerberos KDC. Okay, install and configure the Kerberos client on every host, right? So primarily I have already uh, done that part here where you would be installing, okay? So how do you install it? You would you, you'd simply run this command where you can do a yum install, okay? So primarily you're, you're downloading your Kerberos, I mean Kerberos uh, server, okay, library files, okay? Uh, an auth dialog file and a workstation. So these are different packages which you need to download. <clears throat> okay now which uh, is what I have already done so when I did a yum install right so yum install uh, it has uh, it has got me uh, it has got me the packages downloaded okay so the workstation is something which is a client machine so when I say uh, this is what I have my name node running here and from here I want to enable my Kerberos so this is all the installation steps okay so you run this command you'll, you'll have all the installations done okay that is your first step uh, the next step is uh, uh, you need to configure right so you're copying you're copying your uh, your I mean you, you need to uh, what is this hold on one second yeah, you need to edit your configuration file. Okay, you need to edit the configuration file. Okay, edit your configuration file and set a realm here. The realm that I'm setting here is example.com realm and the, my KDC, my KDC is running on the node one. Okay, and my admin servers, I'm giving a server name. So node one is a host name here. So before moving forward, let me show you this part. Uh, clear this <coughs> so if I do host name this is my node one is my host name right now now here uh, I have a user by the name right so when I say ls uh, uh, how do I invoke my commands on my uh, HDFS H how do FS hyphen ls I just do enter So there's nothing right now. Okay, so let me do this. How do fs ls slash? I'm looking at the root file system, root uh, HDFS file system. So guys, for the guys who are new, uh, what we are doing right now is uh, I'm logged in with the user ID Edureka, okay, onto a server by the name Node One, and right now I'm executing my Hadoop commands. Okay, so this Hadoop commands is what I'm executing against my uh, uh, HDFS. Uh, yes, Rohit, this is slow. Uh, I think my machine uh, issue with my machine, so I have a I have a very small RAM, right? So, uh, <clears throat> so I have a user directory here. Now, within that user directory, I want to see how to press ls user, and I want to see what is there inside the user. Well, this is an 8GB RAM, uh, Rohit, so that's very less for the kind of uh, application we run here so this is the user ID now 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 when we at the end of this when we enable Kerberos if I run this command you would see that it will throw, it will throw an error message okay let's see how it is now here see when I did a ls of user it was showing me everything anybody I mean showing it's showing me Ambari QA Edureka uh, all the user directories it's been showing me so this is what it should not show okay so if you're 
if you are, I mean, if you enable Kerberos, only the users who are who who should, I mean, who can authenticate and who have got the privileges to look into that directory will be able to look at that. Right, right now I'm not authenticated guys, okay, it's still not authenticated. Now, I'm just trying to show you the difference. Now, if I, I'm able to, I'm able to run the commands now, but it's still not done. So, first step is install and configure, okay, and start your KDC. So, so when I say, uh, oops, right, so installation is done, okay, so inst install part is done, look at this part here, let me bring this to the top. So how do I start my KDC? I start my KRB5 server and also my K admin. Okay, so you're starting your KDC. So so right now I have both these services up and running. Like if I want to see. So KRB. Okay, I have I have my KRB, I mean my KDC is up, up and running. Okay, and also my uh, Admin server, K admin is running. Now, what are the next steps? Let's go here. Now it says create principles for Hadoop services and host. Generate key tabs for each principle and place at the appropriate host. So two hosts is what I'm using. One is my uh, node one, and the second one is my node two. Okay, node two. Look at this here. This is my node two. So node two is what I'm I'm saying it will be the client machine, and node one is where I have my KDC running, and from node one is what I want to authenticate. Okay, so once that is done, your Kerberos, you have a configuration is done. Now go back into your uh, uh, your uh, Ambari here and say uh, you have already done. Uh, these two parts are done. Okay. So you just do a next here. Okay, so what this is saying is uh, all you can always you just go with the default settings here. Don't change anything. Uh, for Ambari, security wizard. Let's say next. Uh, yeah. So uh, from here you're creating, right? So what you're doing is you're creating the principles and uh, uh, and principles and the key tabs. Uh, no issues, uh, uh, Rohit. Uh, yeah, I was trying to expand this because I'm I'm more comfortable with Ubuntu. Uh, sorry, on my Oracle uh, VM. So uh, <laughs> so if you can let me know, I'll be happily <laughs> taking that. How to expand this? I think you're meaning that, right? So you create the down, uh, create these uh, principles, download these CSVs, and uh, uh, you save the file. You whatever principles you're creating, you're saving. Let me open this. Yes, please bear with me for some time. Uh, come on. Okay, so you have it here. this but all I have done till now oops one second guys okay so whatever principles and key tabs that you have created right now okay you're copying this copy this and into into a file okay so where do I copy 
Yeah, thanks Rohit. Uh, thanks Rohit. No, uh, yeah, thanks for and appreciate you guys' patience. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I had to spin up this in the last minute, so uh, my uh, uh, Oracle VM start. Uh, I mean, there's an issue with my Oracle VM, uh, so I had to use this. Uh, uh, I had something uh, in my uh, uh, in my Node one, right? So in my Node one, uh, root scripts, I have great. Uh, Oh, sorry, root. Okay, I'm logged in as what uh, ID root. So VI yeah, root uh, scripts and create principles. Uh, no, for this one. So this is what will create the principles. So uh, I need to use uh, root scripts and Keribros. Okay. See if I can paste it here. No, I will not be able to paste it. So the easiest thing is, uh, let me copy this quickly. Open my terminal here, and Kerberos. Uh, oops, uh, why is this? Uh, so this is I already opened here. Uh, let me come out of this. Oh, come on. So insert and paste it here. Okay, so whatever principles and key tabs you have just created, you're pasting into a Kerberos file here. Now I have a simple script to uh, create a principle. Okay, let me clear this here. So I simply run root create principles. Okay, so the path that I would be entering here is my CSV path. Uh, this is a little bit of uh, manual as well as uh, uh, automated way, guys. So uh, typically, uh, typically this is what I mean. I mean, basically, right now everybody is going with either Ambari or uh, Cloudera. So the same steps would be you would be typically using with either uh, either of these two uh, uh, flavors of uh, uh, flavors of your uh, uh, Hadoop installation. Okay, uh, these things you cannot ignore. You can ignore for now. Right now, uh, 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 yes, Kunal, it can be implemented with open source as well. Uh, uh, SPNG is, uh, I think, it's a negotiated authentication, typically primarily used with Windows. Uh, So just try, uh, let's try to stop Kerberos uh, uh, and start the services. Do, 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 do. So just give me five more minutes, guys. So I think, yes, we are almost done the time. Uh, I mean, it's almost the time. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for for acknowledging. That keeps the spirits high. But yeah, I mean, I agree uh, on the VMs uh, on this one. Uh, first time I'm using, not the first time, but used it. But I will not be. I will not have a way to expand this. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, next one probably I would be doing on a on a Oracle's VM. But anyway, if people are uh, I mean if your people are pressed for time, uh, sorry about this. Uh, we are exceeding the time, so if you people can I mean if people have to log off, you can log off. So uh, basically, what will happen is right now once we enable it here, uh, uh, once we enable it, just start start the services and uh, and whatever commands we have run right now here. You will not be able to execute these commands. Okay, this I am running as the user Edubaker, right? So I will not be able to execute these commands. Uh, you basically need to, uh, uh, you basically need to configure the user permissions. Okay, so uh, you need to have something called a kadmin.local, and with that kadmin.local, you you need to create a principle. Okay, create a principle key, generate a key for this user. Okay, and and add it to the ktab file. 
Okay, so once you add to the key app file, you just need to give permissions and, and once the permissions are available, you can simply log in and you can execute these commands. Right, uh, other steps, same for Enmix, Kerberos secure, security and uh, security user for Kerberos in Cloudera. Uh, almost the same steps, uh, Milan. So similar steps where you need to do both, okay? So, I mean, a manual step, right? So manual steps needs to be done as well as a, uh, as well as a automation. So in the sense, automated in the sense, you need to do it from a Cloudera manager. Uh, not sure how many of you are using your, I mean, uh, Cloudera and how many are using your, uh, uh, see on, on node 2 where do we have the Kerberos installed see on node 2 uh, you don't need to have you don't need to have Kerberos uh, server installed you just need to install the uh, Kerberos client machine okay so the Kerberos client is what I have installed just before the start of the session okay. so you just run this command see I'm logged into node 2 and I install Kerberos workstation so so the Kerberos server is installed primarily on your main server guys this is taking too much time okay so uh, no 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 uh, Milan these scripts are all something which we have to write okay so not this something which uh, 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 yes, Rohit. Uh, okay, so these scripts are something which I have here. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, basically uh, from different locations is what I just need to sc uh, scrabble here. Uh, these are what uh, I mean. After I start the Kerberos, uh, this is what I need to uh, uh, do. I mean, configure the user permissions and you set the permissions. Okay, so the user is what I have set for the user ID Edureka, right? So Edureka user ID and my my example dot com is the real. Right. If you see my, uh, if you see, if you have seen the krb.com file, right? Uh, if you see in the krb.com file, see krb.com file. By default, when you download it, everything will be under example. So here is what I have changed in my realms is what I changed. Just the node one, okay? And node one is what I have changed. And uh, and then I need to start, okay? I have to start my uh, uh, both the KRB my, and my K, I mean my KDC and the K admin server. Uh, Anand is asking, so if you have say 150 nodes, we need to install it manually. Uh, see, what will happen is if you have 150 nodes, uh, typically you will have something called a, uh, something called as a uh, uh, tools, okay? You will not be doing it manually. You will be pushing it through tools, either R sync or uh, or you have puppet and you have chef okay so using those tools is what you I mean see anytime you talk about Hadoop cluster right you're not talking about a one node or a two node you're always talking about uh, hundreds of nodes and and what is the biggest node in the cluster uh, biggest cluster in the currently guys how many nodes are there anybody with the knowledge can help me so handling thousands of nodes is impossible Amit is saying 4,200, Kunal says 1,000. Uh, Milad asking any reference links for Kerberos part that can help. Uh, Anand is saying 4,000 node. Yeah, 4,000 is what I have heard, guys. So I think Yahoo has a 4,000 node cluster, but now they say it's 6,000 node. And that's the largest cluster. Uh, maybe that's the limitation, okay? So we talked about name node, right? Name node limitation on 4,000 nodes, but with Hadoop 2, we don't have a limitation there because you're talking about multiple name nodes. Uh, as for the steps, uh, uh, okay, yeah, Anand is saying now they moved to 10,000 nodes, so perfect. I think that's because uh, with Hadoop 2, you have multiple name nodes, right? Uh, reference links, uh, uh, it's all scrabbled from different locations, Milan. Uh, if you want, uh, maybe uh, I can just write up this and uh, uh, send it across to you guys. You can share it across or maybe you can show it to, or maybe send it across into the, or upload into the Edureka's blog site. Okay, Amit is saying uh, the most common clusters are less than 2,000 nodes. Yeah, that's what, I think eBay also has about 1,000 node cluster. So maybe less than that, less than, maybe yeah. Probably less than 2,000 nodes, but, but I think these 10 nodes, 10,000 10, nodes and uh, whatever nodes we're talking about, right, they 
they did it for testing purpose because because you know right yahoo is a primary contributor to uh, uh, towards hadoop uh, they are the guys who funded uh, uh, funded uh, dog cutting and mike caprilla so initially so uh, they i think they do it for more testing purposes so they want to see the throughput and also want to see how the cluster is performing Okay, Yahoo has 4,200 nodes and Amit is saying Yahoo has 4,200 nodes and 10,000 in federation. Perfect. Thanks, Amit. Okay, guys. So, I think, uh, <clears throat> so basically the next step would be uh, uh, configure with permissions. Okay. And this is something which uh, the permissions is what we have to set. Uh, this is going to take some time now. Uh, in case people are uh, hard pressed for time, you can, you can drop off uh, and uh, uh, and and also please uh, provide any uh, valuable feedback. Any ways we can improve? Yes, one thing uh, uh, as uh, uh, one thing uh, I just want to point out was uh, from Rohit. Uh, thanks, Rohit, for your suggestions. Uh, I'll make sure uh, we'll, we'll we'll improve. We'll try to improve on and work on the suggestions you have provided. Yes, uh, the recording will definitely be available. Uh, it will be posted uh, after this session. Definitely, it will be available, guys. And uh, let's try it here. <clears throat> Okay, this is going to take some time, guys. So uh, I'll reach out to the support, and uh, as promised, uh, if you want, I can post this into a Edweka blog site. Okay, so all these uh, examples, some I mean, of the steps and step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, this is just something which I have scrabbled here, so this does not make sense uh, looking at this uh, for guys uh, who are uh, freshly learning or who who wants to set up or enable Kerberos. So I'll, I'll post this. Uh, take my word. I will I will I will reach out to the support and provide it to you guys. Okay, so any other questions, guys? And yeah, thanks, Rohit. Thanks for the, all the wishes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no other questions, then uh, thank you guys for all your time and appreciate your uh, uh, time here. And uh, and yeah, I mean, take time to provide the feedback any way you can. I mean, any feedback is important for us. Uh, the way we can improve ourselves, very, very important. Please uh, try to spend some time on that. Okay, thank you. You guys have a great night and uh, for the folks abroad, uh, have a great evening or a great day and talk to you. Hopefully, uh, try to enroll guys, uh, try to enroll for the administration stuff. Uh, we'll definitely be showing you uh, a lot of in-depth uh, hands-on and uh, we can, we'll definitely walk you through the step-by-step -step instruction and uh, I mean, all the, all the, everything will be explained to you. So, all the presentation that we showed will, is part of the uh, administration course. So, I think finally we need to talk about uh, one final part, uh, admin roles and responsibilities, which is uh, primarily important for a lot of people, right? So, as an administrator, uh, you would be responsible for most of the Hadoop ecosystem projects, and uh, this is very important, right? So, you see here, recovery, upgrading, and patching is what you'll be doing, and performance tuning is uh, is very, very important here. Nowadays, as the number of clusters increase, uh, your performance tuning is what is uh, uh, people would look at. So, it's a learning thing which uh, comes out of experience, and obviously, you need to monitor, right? Right, you need to monitor and then uh, deploy your security. Uh, yes, with, uh, see, Cloudera comes with parcels and they also come with packages. Okay, either ways you can do it installations. But yes, uh, uh, with parcels, uh, patching. Uh, uh, Matching with the parcels, I think you just need to upgrade, right? So, uh, not exactly sure on that, okay? I, I don't want to give a wrong answer, but I need to check on that, verify on that. <clears throat> Oops, sorry, guys. Okay, this is still going on. Um, starting the services. Do, 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 do. Let me see if it's started the services here. Is it 
easiest way to check his uh, breakfast Java. So right now he's in safe mode. Okay, so it's starting the services. So uh, yeah, my name is up. My data node is up. See if it's secure. Data node. This one node one. Uh, on my node two. Let's see what is there. Yeah, these are starting up here on my node two also. Uh, if you guys have two more minutes, we'll wait for two more minutes, guys, and see. Uh, Anand is asking, while we do the upgrade or patch, do we need to bring down the service of Hadoop? Is it mandatory? Uh, yes, Anand, when you're doing a upgrade or a patch, uh, obviously, yes, you have to do it. Bring it down. Uh, you put some. You put the cluster into something called a maintenance mode. Okay, so so that uh, nobody is. Uh, uh, nobody is trying to write into the cluster. See, upgrade and a patch is what requires downtime. Okay, but uh, but you want to add additional nodes and you want to remove additional uh, nodes from the cluster. You follow a process, something called as a decommission and a commission. Okay, that doesn't require you to bring down any of the cluster, uh, uh, any of the cluster uh, uh, services. Okay, now. Uh, um, is there any scope for fresher Hadoop admin developers? Just curious about how much experience they are looking for big firms. Uh, uh, that's Milan's question uh, from 2.4 and above. Can we do rolling? Up? Yes, uh, yeah, I think Amit's question is good. Amit is asking, uh, yeah, we can do a rolling upgrade. So <clears throat> I think, in, in, in fact, with uh, 2. Point, uh, yeah, that's right. Oops, uh, this has failed. Uh, I think some problem with the cluster configuration. So, uh, so hopefully, uh, mm -hmm. So why does it, why does it fail? We cannot go forward, uh, but it still says my startup has failed. Let me see why the startup has failed. Uh, so uh, the question is for as for the freshers. Yes, uh, there is a there is a huge demand for the freshers guys right now in the market. Uh, the freshers would definitely uh, uh, there is indeed a, a, a lot of market is there for freshers uh, definitely required and uh, and uh, especially in the administrators and on the developers. Okay, so if you I mean I mean you know, from for a company looking for a freshers who's got experience, if, if I mean, if you claim and if you say you got really, if you have really experience on this, uh, they're definitely going to hire you. And right now, people are looking for a minimum two years experience. Okay, so Hadoop has been very, very new, maybe two, and people finding people with three years experience is very, very difficult. Okay, so two years and one years is very common now. So, so I think the industry is maturing as of now. Uh, Amit is saying check for the skew with time skew between the nodes. Ah, okay, that could be the problem. Uh, let me see one second. Uh, it says enable, so let me one. Uh, yes, Amit, uh, just want to verify that because uh, right now it should typically say <coughs> it's enabled, but some of the services have not started. So let me see what services have not started. Uh, HDFS, YARN. Okay, so these are fine. Uh, come on. Okay, the node managers are not come up. I think. Okay, so this is where the node managers are still down. Mm, just give me a minute, guys. Well, node manager is also up. Uh, let me do this. Uh, Su into and let me try to do FS FS of slash. There you go. See, we have enabled security. Now it says uh, uh, user group. Uh, this is for this particular user. This is Kerberos is enabled, right? So you will not be able to uh, connect. So the same thing is what we have done here. See, earlier we had Hadoop FSLS and I could get the output here, right? Now I'm not able to get the, I mean, I'm not able to get the results here, right? So this is where, uh, this is how you enable security now. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, how <laughs> will do can it, right? So how will we authenticate? Yeah, that's what the next steps would be, right? So how do we, how do we authenticate, right? So that is where the user, uh, the user 
permission. So up till here is what we have done right now. You started the get gross and configure user permissions, right? So how do you configure the user permissions? Uh, you need to start the K admin tool. Uh, yes, Amit, I'll just come to that. Amit, uh, just give me a minute. Uh, any other questions? I will, uh, yeah, Amit, I will do a in it in a short while. Uh, for this, I need to log in as uh, uh, root. Okay, so so uh, my security is enabled. So what I do, k admin dot local. Okay, so you have invoked your uh, uh, your. I mean, right now you're interacting with your k admin, your Kerberos admin. Uh, what do I need to do? Uh, let me copy this from here. The first thing is uh, add a principal key. Okay, for the user in this domain. Right, so add prints, okay, random key, generating a random key, defaulting to no policy. So there's a principal has been created. Once the principal is created, you need to create a key tab file, okay? So where do you create a key tab file? The key tab file should be created in your ETC. Okay? So I think the step is here. One second, guys. Two minutes. Guys, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. So now the next step is you are uh, you need to create a key tab file. So use this command. Cop I mean, just copy this command. Here we are. Okay. Now just exit out of this. Now you need to set the permissions, right? The permission should be set for that uh, for that user. So change uh, so, so this file should be created let's go and see if this file is already there so you have a you do like a headless key tab right so this one now what the permissions i set i just change it to a director and the user Hadoop. copy change it the next one is change mode set it to 440 the same file first thing is ch I change the ownership now I change the permissions okay now initialize right so how do you initialize you set up everything properly so uh, let's log into Horton Oops. it will wake up oh come on nice Okay, now use this k init. Okay, now I'm logging with ID Adureka here. Uh, I do fs hyphen ls. There you go. Okay. So you have generated, you have created a principle for this user, uh, uh, for this uh, user, and you have now you have set up a security. Now, if you look at this etc krb conf right? So this ticket lifetime, right? This ticket lifetime is what will be for 24 hours. Okay, so this ticket lifetime will be 20, 24 hours. Now I can submit my jobs here. I can submit all my jobs here and uh, I can still, I mean, I mean, that's where I'm authenticating here right now. So if I do K list here, there you go. Okay, so this, this timestamp, right? 24 hours is what we set. So this is where this for this particular user. Okay, all right, guys. So, so this is what uh, setup is. Uh, hope and request you guys to get this. I mean, get it enrolled, and uh, we'll show you more in deeper, in depth, and uh, also the manual steps or so step by step instruction will be shown uh, once you get I mean, if you're interested. So, 
So reach out to the support for any queries and uh, and this I think this will be made available. Uh, uh, right, Jay Krishna? Uh, this will be made available. You can always view this. Uh, okay? Right then. So thanks, guys. You guys have a great day and uh, night. Thank you. Bye-bye.